In today's lesson, I will be coaching a six-figure entrepreneur on how to get to seven figures and beyond. Hey, hey, what's going on, all my fellow and future millionaires? Welcome to another episode of the Millionaire University Podcast, the only school where we actually teach you how to make money so you can graduate rich, not broke. Because why the heck not? In our last class, Lenny Tim was incredibly gracious and came on and taught us all about his mobility scooter rental business and how you can start your own mobility scooter rental business or any rental business for that matter. And in today's class, we are going to turn the tables, no pun intended, and I am going to be coaching Lenny on the steps I think he needs to take to go from a six-figure earning entrepreneur to a seven-figure entrepreneur. I don't typically do one-on-one sessions like this, but if I did, I would probably charge about $1,000 an hour. But you get to be a spy on the wall and listen for free. So now I hope you enjoy this coaching session slash class where I'll be teaching you through Lenny. Let's do it. I sent you an email. It included your goals, like where you want to go, where you want to be a year from now. What does your ideal life look like? How much money do you want to make? And then what is your plan to get there? Do right. you want to transition into that? Sure. So at this time, I have several businesses that I'm working on and sort of running part-time. I'm not fully focused on any one of them. Personally, I like to sort of do a bunch of different things. And I'm still trying to find my thing that's like full-time that I'm really interested in, that I'm really excited about and really committed. So These businesses are very interesting. I like creating things and I like being creative and I like to just, oh, look, I can make a business out of this and it works Mm -hmm. and that's great. But I'm also trying to develop something that I'm a lot more enthusiastic about and I could really, really commit to um, that one thing full time. So I'm still working on that. I'm always researching new ideas. I'm always trying new things and always hoping that I will get to that point. It was instantly clear to me that Lenny's number one and biggest challenge was he didn't have clarity in his business. If you don't know where you're going, any path will get you there. So my goal is in the near future to come up with something and find something that really strikes me that I can really commit myself to and really focus on full time. Because You do have to focus on one thing if you really want to make it big. It's nice to have a few different Mm -hmm. projects going on, but I know that I can't fully um, make them blossom and fully commit to them. They're kind of side projects. So Mm -hmm. that's where I am. And I hope that I get there uh, eventually. I am always searching. I'm always digging. I'm always tinkering with things. So hopefully I'll get there. And I think trying different things is very important. I'm kind of learning what I like. I'm learning what works. And every business, everything that I've done gives me sort of something that I learned and that I can sort of use to move forward to, to kind of narrow it down what it is that I really want to focus on. I see this quite a bit with struggling entrepreneurs. There's something programmed in our brain where new is exciting. And after a while, things get boring or maybe not quite as exciting as we had envisioned. So it's easy to think or rationalize in our mind that, oh, maybe this thing isn't what I'm supposed to do. It's not that exciting. I'm not that into it. It's not really getting the results that I hoped. Like the feeling that maybe you once had isn't the same as it currently is. But you have all this information and knowledge and things that you've learned in that specific thing. And while learning different skills and trying different things is a good thing, there comes a point where you need to commit. You need to lean into something. There's a certain momentum that happens with every business and every individual. And if you miss that momentum, you can get stuck in this sort of loop. And I see that in Lenny's situation. He didn't get stuck in the momentum of not taking action. He's taking action. He's not afraid of taking action. He just has yet to take the next level of action in any one of his businesses which is what has caused his income level to plateau. So that's my goal. My goal is to find that one thing. And hopefully I'll do that within the next uh, few years. And then I will definitely be super, super committed. Um, And I think I will definitely make it work very, very well. This is a topic or a concept that fascinates me. It's something that I feel like has been brought up in my life with different discussions and different people 
just about every day recently. Now, I am all about doing what you're passionate about, doing what you love, doing that one thing. What's the thing that drives you, that pulls you, that makes you want to get up and get out of bed in the morning? But I think there's a few misconceptions that people sometimes have. Number one, Even if you are doing something that you just love, if you find that one thing that you absolutely love and you figure out how to make a business out of it, how to make money out of it, it is still going to be very challenging. There's going to be a ton of work. And what's going to happen with time is that thing that you loved and were really passionate about, you might not be quite so passionate about it, at least in that way. Like, let's say that you love pickleball, but loving To play pickleball as a recreational sport and then having a pickleball business are two very different things. The myth of doing what you love and you'll never work another day in your life just is not true. I have yet to see anybody who is actually doing something that they love and they never feel like they're working a day in their life and they're making good money and all the things, right? Like even when we went to Hawaii, we went on this tour on these kayaks down this river and you'd think, wow, that's like the ideal job. But doing that all summer and making next to nothing. And as I talk to these people, like you can see that even with them, they kind of enjoy it, but it's work. It's not easy. And I'm not saying at all that Lenny is expecting anything easy. Not at all. But I do worry that he is seeking for and waiting for this thing. And he even mentions maybe someday in a few years it'll happen that I don't know if it's going to actually happen in the way that he thinks and hopes it might happen. My thoughts and my advice would be to do something that you're good at. Do something that you're familiar with. Do something that to you has, in a way, the least path of resistance that will help you reach your end goals, that will help you reach your financial goals and create systems and processes out of a business doing that thing. Because if you do that, then you can create wealth and you can buy back your time and then you can do whatever you want with your time. If you can learn to love the process of growing and creating those systems and processes and helping other people and providing jobs and seeing what it does for them. If you can learn to love that and get excitement and joy out of that, knowing that it's still a lot of work together, it's not going to be easy, then I think a lot more people would have a lot more success in their business. Now, once again, every situation is different. Like we literally have our brother-in-law, my brother-in-law, Tara's brother, Tyson here, working with us. And there's a friend of his who's also working with us. And those guys right now are in a situation where they're just trying to figure out how to pay the bills. So they're just working labor jobs. And then to go to the next level, Tyson's goal is to keep working on his couch flipping business. His goal is to maximize the amount of money he can make per hour. Ultimately, that's not what he loves and is super passionate about, but he's passionate about his kids and he wants to spend time with them. And he's passionate about art. So if he makes good money, he can do all the art that he wants. Now, someday it would be awesome if he's in a situation where he doesn't need to worry too much about money and he can focus on art more full time and then maybe he can make money from it. We're currently in a situation where I have this idea of creating this school, Millionaire University, something that my kids can literally listen to and or maybe go to someday and they can learn all the things about money and creating wealth and self-development that I didn't learn when I went to college. But I tell you what, right now that is not paying the bills, but that's okay because we are in a situation where we don't have to worry about that right now. So it's all about awareness. Where are you at in your life? Where do you want to go? And how are you going to get there? Okay, back to the coaching session. Um, My ideal lifestyle would be to have a nice business that I'm really good at, that I can manage, that I can run. I would like to have even several businesses that I can have employees and I can sort of just manage and oversee everything and feel good about, hey, I created this company, this business, it's working and I don't have to do it myself. I have employees. So it could be either that and then I'll have like the one thing that maybe I'm really like, um, you know, focused on and really put my effort in. And I'd like to make obviously a comfortable living out of it. I'm still working, you know, having multiple sources of income, but not one that's, you know, not neither one of them is really big. I'd love to have a consistent, you know, um, let's say rate of, you know, $10,000 a month. I think that would be great if I could get there consistently. And I think that would really, you know, motivate me and be, would be a really great, a great starting point. I think that would, you know, allow me to live 
you know, more comfortably be more comfortable with trying other things, investing into other ideas that I have. And hopefully, you know, from that point on, just, you know, sky's the limit. I just want to grow from that, from there, have my businesses that I manage that I don't have to, um, you know, be fully committed to full time, but I can, you know, kind of oversee and put in my, basically my like flavor onto it whenever I need to, and just grow from there, you know, grow from there. And then if I have other businesses that I want to get into, um, I'll have the opportunity, I'll be able to invest, I'll be able to have, you know, the knowledge and um, just, you know, go from there and just, you know, enjoy, enjoy life and enjoy running these, uh, these projects. Okay. How much are you making right now? It's 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 hard to say, but you know, um, like a monthly rate. Yeah, or or a year, monthly or year. Um, I would say about a you know about a hundred thousand, you know, six figures a year, somewhere around there. Okay, I'm going into coaching mode, right? Sure. You mentioned that your goal is to make ten thousand a month, but right now you think you're making about a hundred. So your goal is to make another twenty thousand a year. No more, because you know, after everything, just to be where it's at least that. First of all, most people don't realize the opportunities that are out there. Boom. Lenny's got that figured out. Tons of opportunities. You see them all the time. Number two, you're an action taker. Most people are not action takers. You take action. You've started multiple businesses. You know more about a lot of businesses than I do, but I make a lot more money than you. I'm not saying that in a braggadocious way at all. You know way more than I do about every business that you run. I think you know your issue. You kind of mentioned it, but even when I told you to come ready to share where you want to go, do you realize how long it took you to tell me? It took a while, right? Yeah. You lack clarity. Yeah. Like you're not even totally sure what you want. I literally sent you an email saying, tell me what you want. You couldn't even tell me. Got to know where you want to go if you're going to get there. Does that make sense? Yeah, 100%. 100%. So I'm going to ask you again, how much money do you want to be making really per month? You want to make more than 10000 per course. month, right? Of course. So we got to come up with a solid number because our brain is wired to solve problems. So you got to know the number that you're trying to get to and by when you're trying to get there. Most people in life, they just kind of meander. They don't have clear goals. They don't know exactly where they want to go. Now, it doesn't mean that goal won't change in that, but you got to have a target. So today is May 30th. So May 30th, 2024, how much money do you want to make in that month? Well, I think exactly what you said, I would have to think and decide actually, but I mean, I could throw out a number and yeah, yeah. Be throw out a number 20,000. Okay. I think that's a perfect number. So you want to make $20,000 by May of next year. And then hopefully the next year it's 30, right? Like you just yeah, keep growing. For sure. So 12 months from now, you got to get to 20,000. How are you going to do it? Um, that's a good question. I'm working on different business ideas and I'm hoping that I can sort of, uh, you know, come up on one, one or two of them and really stick with it and really commit to it and really grow that area. You're okay with like having employees and people do things for you, right? Having people help out. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. What's holding you back. You've taken action. You figured out some things that work. You just haven't done the scaling part. Right. You haven't used leverage. Have you ever had an employee? Not a direct employee. No, I've hired people online for things like contractors, but no, not a direct employee. Okay. And that's the thing. I don't know if um, how it is to manage employees. So you do jewelry, e-com, you do rental businesses, you, have a, you do YouTube, right? Yep. Are those the three main things? You're not doing the um, installation anymore, right? No, I'm not doing that, no. You've done a good job at figuring out how you can raise your hourly rate. A lot of people just go get like a regular job and they're making whatever the going rate is, $20, $30 an hour. You figured out how you can make more money per hour, but you haven't leveraged that into how you can make a lot more money mm -hmm. per hour, right? Right. So that's kind of where we need to get with you. You're kind of like me. You probably have... I don't know if ADD is the right word, but you do a thing and you're excited about it. And then you want to move on to the next thing. Like that's exciting to you, right? Yeah. But the problem with that is I'm hearing all these ideas you're sharing and I'm chomping at the bit of how I think they can all be seven figure businesses. Right. So do you think it's the get excited going into it? Why haven't you like really leaned into one of those? Do you feel like? Because I feel like I'm a creative. I have all types of ideas. I can yep. make things happen. I'm resourceful. 
And I want it to be something that I really, that's me. All these things are kind of, they're cool, maybe they're interesting, but they're not, I don't necessarily feel like, wow, this is the thing I want to be doing with my life. Sure. But you also want to make more money, right? Yeah. Okay. So for me, my first business was a satellite dish business, like selling satellite dish door to door. Do you think that's what I wanted to do with my life? No. No. But it's the thing I started with. And then I got into real estate. And even that, it sounds exciting at the beginning. I'm flipping houses. But once you start doing it, it's not that exciting. What I was excited about was, number one, be able to take care of my family, be able to make good money so I could do whatever the heck I wanted. Then I got into something I was passionate about, which was teaching people about real estate. But by then, I was already making good money. It just depends what you want. Maybe you're okay with the side businesses. That's why it's really important at the beginning. That's why I wanted to know from you, where do you want to be? In a year from now, maybe you don't want to make any more money, mm -hmm. but I could be wrong, but I think you do want to make more money. And I think you want to do more of what you're passionate about. Right. So you either got to choose to live a life of just kind of scraping by mm -hmm. and doing your passion. And then maybe in a few years, that passion will turn into money. But my thoughts, but this is you, you come to your own, like coming to Jesus moment. Right. I would worry a little bit less about, okay, this is like the one thing that I'm super passionate about and more about what does Lenny know today? that can make the most money that he can grow, that he can scale. And that is exciting. Like, I don't know about you, but anytime I've had a business that's successful and I'm helping people and giving people jobs and we're growing and I'm then able over time to systematize that. And then I'm able to like go do whatever I want that I am passionate about. That's exciting. Right. Would you agree with that? Of course. Yeah. I got to go in a couple minutes here, but I want you to think on that. I mean, you're literally going into business still with your friend doing the, the rental business again. Is that your passion or is that not your passion? No, that's not necessarily my passion. I wanted to work with my friend and hopefully get into a better opportunity. So it's kind of like you're telling me one thing when you're doing another thing, like you got to get clear on what you want. It's almost like part of you is afraid to even talk about the number you want to make and the things you got to do to get there because you're like, oh, but I want to go do this other thing. But this other thing's not paying the bills. So if you want to pay the bills, pay the bills. I believe within two years, you could be making a million dollars a year. You could be walking away with a million dollars a year with a systematized business that only requires a few hours of your time per day. Mm -hmm. Then you can do whatever you want. But focus, finish one course until success. Mm -hmm. You have created a million dollar, like the amount of work and effort and things you've learned, the value is more than a million dollars a year. Mm. But because you keep stopping and starting and dabbling, like I, I guarantee you, like I want you to do a time log for me where you're telling me exactly what you do each day. I guarantee it's not super hyper-focused. It's kind of like, oh, I'll dabble here, try this, try this. And that's cool. You've been taking action. You've learned a ton. You've been able to get by with that. But now it's time to take those skills that you have and put them towards like making money. I don't know nearly as much as you do, but I've allowed other people to do those things and that's leverage. Mm -hmm. If I figure out a way to make a hundred dollars an hour and I'm paying other people 20, 25, that's leverage. Then I just get like five people to do that work. Then I can make a million dollars and they're happy because they're making money and, and everything. Right. I'm being a little direct. Is that okay? No, I love it. Okay, cool. So let's do this. I'm going to reach out to you like this afternoon, but just kind of think about some of the things we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, man, I would love to see you making 20 or 30,000 within a year. I think you can. And then within two to three years, I think you can like walk away with your tax income statement saying Lenny made a million dollars this year, right? That'd be great. I think you can do mm -hmm. it. I appreciate it, Justin. I love it. Well, we appreciate uh, you coming on and being vulnerable, sharing value. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to working with you, man, because I think you're an action taker and I think you're willing to do what it takes. <laughs> Can we give it up for Lenny Kim? Dang, Lenny, you are amazing. Thank you so much for coming on and being vulnerable. You got put in the hot seat. You came under fire. Getting feedback like that is never easy, and you took it like a man. But it ain't over. This is just the beginning. <laughs> so here is my homework assignment to you and anyone else who wants to take me up on this challenge. This is a practice that I've been doing for about 18 years now, and it has been incredibly effective in helping me reach my financial goals. And it's super fun. So this is what I want you to do. Take a piece of paper, and at the bottom of it, write May 2025. And then right next to that, write the amount 100 
thousand dollars representing the amount of money that you will make that month and then in the middle of the paper write may 2024 and next to it write thirty three thousand dollars representing the amount of money that you will make in the month of may one year from now i know we talked about you having a goal of doing twenty thousand dollars a month within a year but honestly i think that's a little low So let's up the ante just a bit. Now, everyone listening in, keep in mind this is specific to Lenny. So if you haven't made any money yet, then you might want to adjust your numbers. Maybe with the goal of getting to a million in three or four years, depending on your situation, how much time you're able to put into it, your ambition, etc. And then fill in the blanks. Where do you want to be six months from now? Now, there's no exact number you have to use. This is your game to play. So you come up with the numbers that you think make sense for you, but that'll also be milestones that will help you reach your ultimate goal of getting to $100,000 per month in two years. And you don't have to come up with a number for every month right now. Eventually, you'll want to, but at minimum for every quarter. And part of the reason why we do this is because our brains are wired to solve problems. So this is essentially helping us come up with a problem that we need to solve for. So this is the answer. And then it's up to us to come up with the solution to accomplish this goal. And once we have our money goals, then we can figure out how to get there. Now, ideally at this point, you know the vehicle, the business that you're going to use to get there. And it's just a matter of figuring out the systems and processes and people that you need to put in place to help you reach those goals. So Lenny, in your situation, you just need to get clarity on this. Personally, I would recommend going with something that you're currently already doing and you're already familiar with, you already have experience with. Or I would pick something that you feel like you can do and pivot into relatively quickly because you have pretty good expertise in that area, but maybe it's something that you're pulling towards a little bit more. Or the truth is it doesn't really matter if you still continue to do more than one of these things, as long as you're able to do it in a way that you're using leverage points. So for instance, I don't really know all the details of how involved you are in your online jewelry business or how much time that takes, et cetera. So I'm not saying that you need to totally throw one of them out the door. Maybe that is the case. Maybe you do need to hyper-focus on one thing, but maybe your jewelry business could be pretty streamlined with one person or one system doing one thing. Like maybe you pay this one person 20 to $25 per hour and it allows you to continue to run the business and make even more money than you're making right now. To me, that's a little more clear in the rental business. Like you could easily hire someone who you pay 20 to $25 an hour to do some of the deliveries and some of the things for you that take a lot of your time. That honestly is probably part of what is causing you to not be so passionate about these things. I mean, who's gonna get excited over driving a scooter around for hours upon end when they could be creating something that's a lot more enjoyable. But if you can become the rainmaker, the man who makes it happen, the man who gets the business, and then you hand off more of the time intensive things to someone else who they're just looking to make some extra money with their time, then boom. Now working with people isn't necessarily that easy. But just like anything else, any other skill, it's just a matter of taking the time to find the right person and the right process and learning from that. It's a skill, essentially. And sometimes it takes a minute to find the right person or you have to go through a few people. But once you do, it changes everything. No, I'm not saying that it has to be a person. There are many leverage points that you could utilize that can help you get to a seven-figure business. People is just one of the most obvious and easiest ones to use, especially in your situation. But there could be others, and that's a matter of you determining that and maybe me knowing a little bit more information about some of your other businesses. But it's definitely doable. But I really do think your biggest issue that you're having is not necessarily the vehicle. Like I think all the vehicles that you are using could work. I think your biggest issue is you're not in your genius zone enough of the time in any of those different vehicles. Like you're probably doing a lot of busy work, a lot of work that anyone could do that helps you not feel like you're in your creative zone, doing the thing that you're best at, doing some of the things that you love. Like, don't get me wrong, you'll still be doing a lot of what you don't love in any business, But I think as you go to that next level, that scaling level, that leverage level, that level that has, quote unquote, bigger problems, which I don't really think are bigger. There's just less people who get to solving those problems because it's just the next level and less people go there. That's why they call it the 1%. 
But I think as you go into that territory, as you go into that zone, you'll find that excitement that you had and that you have when you have these new ideas that you come up with. But the truth is, if you just keep chasing the next shiny object, the next idea that you think will give you passion, that usually lasts for a few months and then it dies down because you're still there. You still have to deal with you. And if you haven't learned to overcome some of those bigger problems, those bigger obstacles, you're just starting over again and again and again and again, just chasing your tail. So that's what I think you need. Because the truth is we're spending a lot of time right now talking about the vehicle, but we need to get you to where we're focusing on your KPIs, your key performance indicators. What are your monthly, weekly, and daily goals? A great book, if you haven't read it, is The 12-Week Year. Now, I don't necessarily agree with everything in that book, but it'll give you the concept of where you want to go. You need to get to the point where every day, every week, you're making these goals. You're trying to accomplish these things. But once again, if you don't know where you're going, if you don't know what you're trying to accomplish, if you don't know the vehicle that you're going to use to get there, you're not going to get traction. It's impossible. So that's step one. Like a step one is taking action, which you've done, but literally you've kind of been fumbling on step two for quite a while. I mean, I don't mean to be tough on you, but you've been doing this for several years. And to me, it feels like you keep hitting this plateau. So that's what you want to focus on. Do that. Do this exercise that I talked about. Let's help you figure out the vehicle that you want to use. Normally focus, finish one course until success. So anyone listening, I do not recommend that you start multiple businesses at one time. Yes, at some point, diversification does make sense. And if you're investing in like the stock market, diversifying probably makes sense. And when you have millions of dollars and you have a streamlined business, diversifying to a degree makes sense. But at first, you got to go all in on the thing that you're doing. That's your business. If you try to chase many rabbits, you will catch none. People misunderstand diversification. If you try to start multiple businesses at one time, you're not going to be able to do any of them successfully. Another thing you might really want to think about is if you're going to do e-commerce, do e-commerce, but then over time, put out multiple products that the same audience, the same customers that you already have would also be interested in because then you don't have to acquire new customers. But I'm sure these are all things that you studied, you're aware of, or we can dive into once we have a better understanding of the vehicle that you're going to use to reach your goals. Okay. Woo. All right. Well, Lenny, I hope you got a lot out of this coaching session. I hope everyone else got a lot out of Lenny's coaching session or your coaching session through Lenny. This has been a lot of fun. Lenny, I believe in you. I know you can do it. And the truth is it might take you some time. Maybe you totally disagree with everything I'm saying. And that's totally cool. There are a lot of mentors I've had where I don't agree hundred percent with everything they say. That's totally fine. But if you're up for it, if you want to keep working through this, I think there are some mental belief blockages, something going on that is causing you from reaching that next level. I'm happy to help you work through that. Tara is really good at that kind of stuff as well. She's a lot more patient than I am. She helps people come up with their solutions on their own. I just like, you got to do this. What the heck? You know, so I can be a little brutal. But if you're up for it, we're happy to continue down this path. If you totally disagree and you're like, no, I want to take a few years and figure out that one thing that I want to do, then cool. Like, that's awesome. That's why it's also important to have clarity on what you want. You just have to decide, like, do you want to get to that multiple six and seven figure mark sooner so you can then spend more time doing the things that you love? Or do you want to take a few years figuring out the thing that you're passionate about that over time you can also make money with as well, which is definitely doable. I guess it's just a different path. So once again, Lenny and to everyone else, that is my challenge for you. If you want to take me up on it, go ahead and write down those number goals that you have and then write the step-by-step of how you're going to get there. For example, for you, Lenny, I would like to see how you're going to get to $20,000 per month within six months. Because the truth is, that's where I think you can go and where I think you should be in six months based on where you are now and the experience that you have. But if anyone else wants to do a similar practice, go ahead and send me your numbers and send me your plan. I'm a little behind on some emails from some of you who have sent me your homework in the past. Things have been pretty crazy around here with us getting ready to sell our house. But pictures were taken last night. The guy came for like six hours. He did an awesome job and it should be going on the market tomorrow. But the house is pretty much ready and we're a lot closer. So now it's just a matter of maintaining. And if we can keep our kids gone on camps like they are this week, then we have a much better chance of doing that. 
All right. Other than that, thank you so much for joining us on today's episode, today's lesson, today's class. I hope you all got a lot out of it. I know I sure enjoyed it. This is something I really do love. So Lenny, I hear you. I feel you when you want to do what you're passionate about because I feel incredibly blessed to do something that I love every day. Oh, that's another thing, Lenny. If you can create a high six or seven figure business doing one or multiple of these things consistently and persistently, then you can create courses and programs and all kinds of things around teaching other people how to do those same things. But you got to kind of get there first. I mean, I know you have a YouTube channel where you're teaching people how to do it and things like that. And sure, that will probably get some traction here or there. But in order for it to really take off, in order for you to have a course or a program that you can really make good money from, you have to really have your systems dialed in. And so my recommendation is go ahead and do the YouTube for fun or on the side if you want as long as it's not a distraction, but I would really hyper focus in and create a business that really works well, like clockwork. And you could teach to anyone just on a whim, right? In our next class, we will be talking about the Amazon influencer program and how you can make money by reviewing products that you probably already have around your home. In the meantime, share this episode or this podcast with a friend, just shoot them a text and they'll thank you later. All right, so other than that, everybody get out there. Have a great week. Take some action. Do the next most important thing that you need to do today in your business, the thing that will really move the needle. And we will see you next time on the Millionaire University Podcast. Class dismissed.